You're listening to the Write Project podcast and radio program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, what was the best money you ever spent as a writer? And today to answer, we have on Jamie Thomas, the author of Asperfell, a gothic fantasy YA adult crossover novel novel that Publishers Weekly said had tremendous crossover appeal. Jamie Thomas, uh, what is the best money you ever spent? spent as a writer anything you spent money on that was even tangentially for your writing career what was the best money you spent oh that is a wow that's a really unique question gosh you know what this is going to maybe sound very um pretentious and Mm. i may want to delete this later nope but um Um, My writing definitely improved when I did my degree in teaching English. Um, So I'm I'm honestly going to say that degree um, was the best money I ever spent in terms of writing uh, because, and and this is, here's the thing, is I hadn't been doing a lot of writing up until that point. Um, I had, I was an event planner. I know this is so weird. I spent like eight years in California trying to pay my student loans back as an event planner and sort of stop writing altogether and never did it. But when I decided to go into education um, and decided to go back into English and teaching English, so again, um, shout out to my parents who kind of always knew that this was going to be the path I would uh, find myself on, um, I was suddenly writing tons of papers and editing essays and uh, thesis work and all that, and it sort of broke open a floodgate for me. And that's actually what made me start writing fiction. Um, So I tried and failed to write a couple of of novels, um, never got beyond just a few chapters or what have you, but it got my creative uh, writing juices flowing again. And it also helped me with uh, being a better copy editor, Uh, because if you're learning how to teach somebody how to write and how to edit, um, then you are learning uh, subsequently how to be better at doing that for yourself. Um, And while, however, I will say, um, copy editing is not editing. And as good of an editor as I might be in a basic sense, even... um, with uh, my education, there is no substitute for a true editor. And uh, my editor is phenomenally good. And uh, my novel would not be what it is without him. But I would honestly say that the best money I've spent was that degree, because not only did it help me become a better writer and editor, but it got me, it pushed me back into writing. And um I was doing that degree and my student teaching actually when I started writing Asperfell. Okay. Uh, so without without it, I don't know that I would have um, actually done it. So, but I, I realize that sounds incredibly pretentious to say that the best money that I ever spent on writing is a college degree. No. Let it be known, it was still student loans. Um, <laughs> no, no, that's but, not that that that's not pretentious <laughs> at all. That's that's well, perfectly good. fine. And it ended up helping me serve, obviously. I I love teaching, and I love teaching English. And I teach in a um, a high-poverty, migrant, Title I school district um, up in Orondo, actually. And um, I went into teaching because I wanted to make the most difference that I possibly could. And um, I do, and I love that. And so um, that degree was perfect in for more than one reason for me excellent okay cool thank you very much next up we have aaron vance editor-in-chief of engine books 
and the editor of the From the Ruck anthology series. What was the best money you ever spent as a writer? I bought a new laptop with what you paid me for Sci-Fi on the Rock. Yep, good. That was definitely the best money I've ever spent because now I can play games on it. Good. <laughs> That's great. As a writer. <laughs> As a writer. Uh... High five that we'll cut out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... Laptop's definitely good. Advice. A laptop one. I bought some pens. Staples back to school sales are my favorite yeah. thing ever. I very much enjoy the Staples um, clearance sometimes I'll go into Staples and just go straight to the clearance thing and I'll pick up little treasures that I would never buy for myself but mm -hmm. are there like I have a Rolodex because I always wanted one because I'm a child of the 90s but like I still have yet to fill it out because who needs a Rolodex iPhones exist yeah Staples I love also sometimes you just have to go into chapters and just like feel like for me that's almost an aesthetic Every once in a while, I'm just like, I use it to be like, be recharged, and then I'll buy something I don't really need from chapters, but it's almost like, ah, oh, yes, this aesthetic can come home with me now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Laura Lana Dunn, the superstar short story author who recently put out her first full novel, Ashes, which came out in June 2020 from Engine Books. Laura Lana Dunn, what's the best money you ever spent as a writer? So that can be anything you spent money on that you can think you you used for your writing. It can be a physical object, it can be classes, it can be a typewriter, anything. Um, I use a lot of free stuff, I'm going to be honest. Cool. Yeah, I use, um, so I use... Google Docs, so that's a free cloud system. Um, so that's where my drafts usually are. My Chromebook, which is what I'm currently using, was actually a gift from my husband. So that was very thoughtful of him for the purpose of writing. Um, so I use that for writing. I coordinate with Google Docs to my cell phone, which I mean came under a plan. Um, I do, like most authors, have a weird collection of non-used journals. Always very good. I don't know if it's an aesthetic thing or if it just puts you in the mindset, but journal shopping is super fun, even if you never use them. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to have to say money that I've spent going to seminars or to writing classes or to networking events with other authors. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously not a day-to-day -day thing. I, I certainly don't do that every single day. I've probably done maybe five to ten in, in the last few years. Uh, but it's just, it's really nice writing by nature as a solitary act. So getting out and meeting people who are also doing that solitary act kind of reaffirms that you're doing it correctly, I guess, or you're on the right path. And I think if anyone is serious about any type of craft they're involved in, going to workshops and going to developmental um, talks or teachings or, you know, workshops, things like that is is important and kind of a given because everyone can use a refresher or everyone can use a, a different set of eyes or can just talk about it. It's just, it's a really nice thing to do. And I think it's really beneficial. Cool. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Tanith Frost, best-selling author of the Immortal Solace series. Tanith, what is the best money you ever spent as a writer? Definitely hiring a really, really, really good editor for my first book. Uh, someone who would not only fix my grammar and punctuation and errors like that, but who would really dig deep into the story, tell me exactly what was wrong with it, no matter how badly it hurt. Uh, I think I learned more from him than I did from... Sorry. Uh, I think I learned more from him than I would have if I had spent the same amount of money on college courses or anything equivalent. Yeah, I, I learned a lot the first time a really good editor got a hold of mine, too. Thank you very much. Next up, we have the author of Alligator and February, Lisa Moore. Lisa Moore, what is the best money you ever spent as a writer? Well, you know, I, I did the very first creative writing class at Memorial, and although I don't remember paying for it, 
I think that's prob. I mean, I did pay for it, but that I probably don't remember that because that is not what you know is important to me now. It, it, it's it was a it, it was a completely altering course with Dr. Larry Matthews. Um, it uh, you know he. I think one of the he said he just gave so much advice and, and he was such a great teacher. Um, but I think one of the things he told us that really struck home was the notion that you we could write about Newfoundland, we could write about the places where we were from, um, wherever they were. Uh, I happen to be from Newfoundland, so I I could write about Newfoundland. And I hadn't at that time. It was so long ago. Uh, seen, you know, uh, very many novels or short stories set in Newfoundland. Like I could probably, it was such a small number, I could probably list them. But, um, and of course that has exploded now and there's so much literature. Uh, and by literature I'm talking about fiction because there's always been all kinds of history. And, um, but, uh, you know, Larry really uh, encouraged us to write about the streets we were walking on. And to and it didn't matter if you were from here, but if you happen to be walking to the ship in, then that was material that could be used. Because I think when we started, uh, we all thought that we should set it in a place that seemed more real, more solid, because it had already been written about a hundred thousand times. So if, if someone was walking down the city street at night, it, it even if it was happening in St. John's, they might set it in New York. So that was a that was a powerful experience because it really rooted me to the concrete world, which is I think where uh, a lot of writing comes from. Even even science fiction comes from the concrete world around us, the the world that we experience with our senses. That's so true, and uh, and that's a very interesting thing you were saying because like. From my point of view, like my very, very subjective point of view, it's it's wonderful. And you're right, there has been this explosion of like fiction that's set in Newfoundland and like permission given to write about being from Newfoundland and being in Newfoundland and being about Newfoundland. But it, it's it's interesting because I find it that now I get looked at the other way. Like I personally don't have a Newfoundland story in me. And I find it swung the other way now, whereas I get this kind of side eye where it's like, well, you're a Newfoundlander. Why don't you write a story in Newfoundland? I'm like, well, I don't have that in me. I just don't. You well, know? I mean, it, dep- I dep- it depends what you call about. Uh, sorry, it depends what you think a Newfoundland story is. I mean, we are in a place where a ton of writing is happening. And... And we meet those people who are writing those stories, who are sending those stories to magazines, who are sending them to publishers. Um, We're meeting them on the street. We're talking to them in bars and restaurants where there's a community here. And that community informs each other and supports each other. And um, I think uh, no matter, like, if if your story is set in St. John's, or if you are from another place and you come and live in St. John's and you are writing about that other place, all of that still uh, draws from a community that, and, then our, and not just a writing community, but a whole artistic community that is available to, all, to us all here. And I think there's a, there's a generosity, and maybe there is in every writing community or artistic community, but here I think there is a, a history of people who work in um, music sharing uh, the stage with people who work in theater and people who work in theater are working with writers and people who are working with writers are working with painters who might be doing set designs and then they're going to their painting shows. So I think that when we talk about what a Newfoundland story might be, uh, it's far more complex than just setting a story in Newfoundland or, um, yeah, it's, it's it's about communities but they're you know every writer belongs to many communities we every writer belongs to uh whatever community the writer we're happening to be reading at that moment also belongs to excellent i like that that's wonderful thank you thank you thank you very much Next up, we have Ali House, author of the Segment Delta Archives series, as well as a frequent contributor to the From the Rock collection of anthologies. 
Alley House, what is the best money you ever spent as a writer or for writing? Uh, <laughs> the best money I've spent, so money I've gotten as a writer? Nope, no, nope, money you've spent. So like writing classes or cool pens or anything like that. Oh, um, okay. I love a real good notebook and a real good pen. Because I need to be able to write on the fly, and technology needs batteries. Um, I've also, I bought myself a tablet with a keyboard on it, so that I have something that I can take with me when I travel, because my laptop is just too big to carry around. So I love that I have something that I can also edit on, not just write. Cool. Yeah. What kind of pens do you like? Um, I don't have a favorite brand of pens, but I need something where there's, the ink is smooth, yep. so it like glides over the page, but it's not like too much, uh, so it's not sticky or anything. You don't need to worry about making sure it's dry before you turn the page. I like just the, the standard blue ballpoint that you can get, like five for ten cents kind of thing. Uh, yes, I, I still have that engine pen that I stole from you guys, <laughs> and I've replaced the ink in it a second time now. That is um, lovely. And I do, I do love the ink cartridges I get for that because I need an ink that's fast enough to keep up with my brain when I'm writing. Nice. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Morgan Murray, author. Currently, he has the book Dirty Birds with Breakwater Book. Okay. Uh, Morgan Murray, what is the best money you ever spent on your writing career? It can be anything. It can be classes right down to a typewriter. If you spent money on it, it counts. Ooh, um, best money I ever spent as a writer. I don't know if I actually spent any money. I worked at Mun, and so if you work at Mun, you get one free class per semester. Nice. And so one semester, uh, Lisa Moore was teaching an advanced fiction workshop, and so I took that class. And Lisa Moore is a brilliant genius. Um, so it was an honor just to be in that class. But then I also met up with a bunch of other uh, aspiring writers, and we started a writing group um, called the Port Authority. And uh, we've all. There, I think there's. I'm still kind of on the outside because I, I moved to Cape Breton a couple years ago. But uh, there's Sharon Bala with the boat people. She was in the group. Uh, Susan Sinet had uh, Catching a Light, which won a bunch of YA awards last yeah. year. Uh, Melissa Barbeau had uh, The Illuminated Sea, which I think was up for the winter set or something. Yeah. Um, uh, Jamie Fitzpatrick, uh, The End of the Music, was a breakwater book that did really well. Um, and Carrie Avardi has a book that isn't out yet, but it will be at some point, and then me, so that's kind of the the last six that remain so um it was really cool to be part of that group to see us go from uh these starting out writers uh in lisa's workshop and now uh, we've all you know critiqued each other's novels as they've come out and and have done really well so that was that was uh Mun benefits well spent. Well, that's wonderful. And I love stories like that because, like, I always think of, like, hey, if this takes off, uh, which I think yours might, actually, based on what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, that, like, like 20 years from now, your people will be like, hey, did you know that Morgan Murray and Jamie Fitzpatrick knew each other? <laughs> the same way that now we say, did you know Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were friends? You know what I mean? Yes, that's that. Me and Jamie are exactly Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and it, but you could, you you don't, you never know what history is gonna think of your work. You know what I mean? Yeah, all books may be erased except for me and Jamie's, and then they'll be really impressed. Uh, you, we joke, but like, if there was a like an ep, like a big problem where all the fiction was destroyed, like an apocal apocalyptic event it is more likely that copies of Twilight and Fifty Shades will survive than anything else. Because there are so many of them out there. Like, it is entirely possible that history, a thousand years from now, will recognize this as the Twilight era of books. I'm counting on Newfoundland to survive whatever apocalypse, so... Uh, I've been doing pretty good during survive. this. Yeah. Thank you very much. 
Next on the line, we're pleased to have artist and photographer Kit Sora, the visionary artist behind Kit Sora, the autobiography. Uh, what is the best money you ever spent as a photographer? Ooh, Ooh that's a tricky one. I I don't know. I, I guess my most recent camera. Um, what is that? What do you use to shoot? 5D Mark III. Um, it's magical full frame and it's, God, it's old now, but... It does. It does the job. It was, you know, when I when I was working at Henry's, I had I had my 5D Mark II, and I had a couple of 70s kicking around. There's always been cameras in the house, um, and I used to borrow that one from work to like shoot weddings and stuff. And I started using the demo unit for like everything that I was doing. And then my my poor 5D Mark II wasn't getting as much love. And you know, when I found out that Henry's was closing, I was you know sad, obviously, and kind of heartbroken. Um, and I was going to have to see that camera just go away. And then it went on sale. And I'm like, I'm not ready. I thought I was prepared. I thought I could let you go, but I can't. And, and, and Drew bought it for me. I, I, I paid him back. But he bought it for me. And I feel like that's kind of the best money that we've spent. Um, I guess in terms of like gear. Um, I have a lot of lenses that I've, I've sort of lucked into. Um, and then I guess any materials used for props. Yeah. I don't know. It didn't, no money goes to waste. I'm like, you know, I... No, you're very... Everything... You use the whole animal, to yeah, use a weird analogy. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't need to be a millionaire to create good photos. I mean, I was doing good stuff before I had that camera. Yeah. Um, and I often try to challenge myself with, like, not, not so much phone photos, because I'm not much of a phone photographer, but, like, older cameras and, like, you know, tiny little digital cameras and stuff like that, because it's always really cool to sort of get back to your roots uh, and proof that it's... You know, it's not the gear; it's the photographer. So I, you know, yeah, I, I do try to do that. But my I like film. I, li I yeah. like that. I learned on film, and I, I learned that. Yeah, I've I got a bunch of the, the film cameras, but it's yeah. really expensive to get it all developed. It is. Well, it is, and you can't. You could never do like your thing where you do take multiple shots. You could never. Yeah, digital photography has spoiled us. Like yeah. it's 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 outrageous, and sometimes I feel guilty for doing as many photos as I do because nine chances out of ten, over half of them are never going to see the light of day. Yep. But you know, with film, you really had to be more conscious of setting up the photo and setting up the lighting and having everything perfect. So like you know, those who shot film were the real pros because like you you know back then you didn't have Photoshop and you didn't have the ability to look at the back of the screen and you know, see where you went wrong or see what you need to change. It's, yeah. you know, you shoot it, you hope for the best. In a week's time, you figure out if you've got it or not. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I am spoiled, you know. I remember once doing, <laughs> back when I was trying to do photography, like I managed to do a whole shot uh, and it was early days and mm -hmm. I did a whole bunch of shots. And then when I went to go process the film, I realized that I hadn't actually taken it out. <sighs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, we had, oh my goodness, people used to, when I worked in the old um, Walmart photo lab, people would come in with their rules of film because they just shot weddings, and it was kind of like the crossover yeah. between film and digital, and, you know, if you got six out of seven rules fully developed, it'd be a good day, but, like, there'd be times, that, you know, because you never know if the film is loaded prop, you just waste, I know, I guess, but, yeah. you know, if, if it, you know, exposes properly or something goes wonky, it's, you know, if that's somebody's wedding, it's, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I like digital, but damn. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Nicole Little. Nicole Little is an acclaimed short story author who has been featured in more than a half dozen titles just in the last year. She has been featured in Kitsora, The Autobiography, best-selling Dystopia from the Rock, Flights from the Rock, Monsters, Beyond, and Apocalypse, Apocalypse, Eerie Christmas, Love, and Bad Romance. It's just a plethora of short story material. Currently, she is working on The Lotus Fountain, which is going to be one of the books included in, or novellas included in a big project from Engine Books that we can talk about now called Slipstreamers, which is a multi-author novella series, which to release one book, one novella, a month. Thank you for joining us, Nicole. Thanks for having me. Nicole Little, what is the best money you ever spent as a writer or on your writing? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, a few... Oh, my God, it's a nice while ago, and I was going to say a few months, so it's probably longer than that. Um, I my, my laptop died, which is, you know, 
horrifying because yep. how am I going to write? Um, so I, when I went to get a new one, I was just going to like, you know, cheap out, just get something, you know, that I could save some stuff on. Sure. But then I, I spotted this, um, like touchscreen one and <laughs> I know it sounds a bit gimmicky, but it's been great because I can almost like do things with like, I can be typing and then I can just zoom in on something or I can pop out into a new screen or I can save something really quick. And it's actually, I don't know. It's, it's when I'm writing or something, it's made it easier Okay. Because instead of having to like click on 10 different things, I just touch my screen and then I can do it. So it's, you know, it's been, you know, really, um, it's helped my productivity. Okay. That's cool. That's interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Candace Osmond, best selling author of Dark Tides and Killer Me. What is the best money you ever spent? as a writer or for your writing? The best money was, um, how do I, uh, well, it was actually a series of different things. So there's this, um, service provider named Rebecca Hamilton, and she owns a company called, um, author grow. And she offers, so many different courses and little workshops and stuff online where you pay a one-time fee, like you buy the course material. And at first I was a little hesitant because there's so many service providers out there nowadays, sort of targeting these aspiring writers. Yeah. But he has a, a huge following, like thousands and thousands and thousands of authors follow her, recommend her, sing her praises she with their permission she always shares like uh proof and screenshots of how she helped um so many authors go from making you know hardly anything a month to like six figures oh wow like, okay uh, it's, she's amazing so um about a year and a half ago i invested i think like a couple hundred dollars in a few of her smaller courses like one was thirty dollars one was sixty dollars that kind of thing and it was like how to polish your sales page on amazon and how to um create hooks chapter hooks at the end of your chapters to make a book more plot driven that just little things that i knew i needed but didn't know how to do it or how to get it kind of thing so i really think probably the best money i've spent so far in my career um because once i did do those courses and applied the stuff I learned, my income and my following took off. Like, and it's continuing to grow. Can you send me those? I certainly can, yeah. Ellen was telling me about those and saying that, like, she would support me doing that too. Like, as much as she thinks that, like, I'm doing some of it already, we can always learn. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. I was like, well, maybe I can, you know, maybe I'll get a couple little things out of this. But no, I learned so much. It was insane. From, And I think to date, I've taken five or six of her smaller courses. And I've I made back my money in the first month. Yeah. Like three times over. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If you can, if you can link me to that, that'd be appreciated. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Tyon Collective author Susan McDonald. Susan McDonald, what is the best money you ever spent as a writer? The best money I ever spent as a writer um, was on travel. <laughs> because going places spurs my imagination on. And when I have actually physically been places, um, you can you can write about it far more authentically. You know what it smells like. You know the sound of the types of birds in the trees. You 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 can you can say with authenticity whether there's a train in the background or not, right? Yeah. And that makes that for me makes the books come more alive and they're far more enjoyable to read. But it's kind of expensive, so. Um, but it, but it is good money. I, I always think, regardless, um, travel is always money well spent. Yeah, I agree. Um, Susan McDonald, 
Are there any... All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.